Commercial Women's Hockey Club are lucky enough to produce some top class players and today we have Madonna Blythe and Renee Taylor joining us. How have you mixed emotions and feelings about leaving the Div 1 girls and then heading over to Perth? Yeah, um, a lot of mixed emotions. Wasn't, probably wasn't prepared for it, like clearly it's a dream but you know, played mostly club hockey in Brisbane and then just getting told, oh, I'm moving to Perth next week. So it's a bit scary, but you know, you gotta be there, you gotta move over if you wanna get there eventually, so. Yeah, absolutely. How do you think the Div 1 girls will go this year without, without obviously one of our key players? Oh, I think it was a bit of a shock for the Div 1 maybe. We had a few players in the team that, well, I thought we had a really good chance of maybe winning a premiership this year. And, but it looks like we're still going pretty well being top of the table but you know I think I owe a lot to the girls and then so just not being there with them kind of just hurt a little you know um, I reckon we've still got a pretty good chance to make top five and even go all the way for the premiership so you know, they don't need me I wasn't there most of the year last year anyway. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> um, in saying that Donnie you um you left about the same age as Renee, actually. Yeah, so I played um, a lot of my junior hockey at Valleys, uh, but then into more my senior years, played at commercials a little bit before Renee's time. But um, I moved to Perth when I was 19, so about the same age. And um, I guess it's probably could be a similar journey for Renee, similar age, coming from the same club um, and moving to Perth to pursue uh, more of a hockey career. Yeah, I think the club team at commercials in the division one when I moved over was very strong it was a really um, tight-knit group and we had really good coaches with Anne-Marie Callow I think coached my first year with Kevy Lennon and I think um, you know there were some really strong players some in the Australian group at the time and others playing for the Queensland Scorchers so for me I think it was just about being in a really good team a close-knit team with um, some really good players and that gets you ready um, to go on and, and play in Perth but then go on to play for Australia. I think a few of the players for commercial that um, you know, I played a lot of hockey with back in those days were people like um, Dan Boland, um, Carly Lennon, Susie Faulkner, Monique Fox. I think girls like that, we played together for a, a few years at commercials, but also into you know, the Scorchers and um, beyond that. So for me, I think you'll always have that bond of the girls that you played um, and that you won premierships with. I think that's a really important thing for a club and for a team. So. I think those girls I have memories of right back to when I was 15, 16 years old. Yeah. And Renee, I, um, in saying that, do you, you would know a couple of those players that Donnie listed off then? Yeah, I think uh, especially Dana, you know, she's someone that I really looked up to starting into seniors with commercials. So she was actually the coach at Div 2 and then just like, you knew, you knew her background, you knew she was a scorcher. Same with um, yourself, Ali, and just, you know, really looking up to those kind of players and just trying to base your game on them and just learning everything you can while you're there with them. Uh, Donnie, do you see yourself coming back to Brisbane um, anytime soon in the near future and putting on a commercial shirt again? Um, I, I'd like to, it probably won't be in the near future, fingers crossed, but um, I think it's always great to get back to where you started and maybe that'll be in a couple of years, maybe it'll be you know, when I'm running around in vets or something, but I think I'd love to get back to Brisbane hockey and that's where it all started for me and to come back, you know, to put on a, a commercial jersey, I think would be good fun. As long as a few of the old girls are still running around there, I think um, it, it's potentially, but hopefully not too soon. Yeah, and in saying that, Donny, um, saying back to your roots, even Renee, um, it, is, it is you playing Brisbane hockey uh, is where it all started. So if you didn't have Brisbane hockey or your commercial juniors, um, and your commercial senior years here, you wouldn't be where, where you are today. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, I think um, for me, like I grew up running around Downey Park playing hockey and um, that's where I guess the love of the sport for me comes from um, and they're memories that you don't forget. Um, so for me, yeah, I think playing, playing back at your club team, coming back to the city where it started, it holds those fond memories and um, yeah, like it might, it might not be for a while, but I think there's, um, you know, it'd be great to come back and play a few games for the Mighty Purple. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I think for me, it's such just a family thing. So I know commercial is a bit of a family club. My parents actually met uh, at an old commercial function back in the day. So yeah, just, it's just been something the family's done and just gone from there and made a bit of a career out of it. 
Uh, Renee, when were you aware Madonna um, was a commercial player? Uh, oh, you know, I think ever since she started playing for the Hockey Roos, her photo's always been up in the commercial clubhouse. So just walking, every time you walk in for training, you'd, you'd look up and you just see just names. So you got like the likes of Mark Hager, we've got Donnie up there now, Dan Beale's been up there for a few years. So I think, oh, it would have been 08, 09, would have realised she was a commercial player and just, you know, someone you watch growing up and just want to base your game on. So knowing that she's from the same club as you, it's pretty, actually pretty awesome. Um, and Madonna, when did you become aware of Renee and her um, potential to come and play for Australia? I think probably a couple of years ago, um, you start to hear, you know, all the young ones coming through, like who's got the potential, who's going to make it. And I think Renee's name got brought up regularly um, in those types of conversations. And I think, you know, she's still very young and um, due to have your photograph put up on the wall pretty soon, I reckon. <laughs> Um, playing a couple of games for the Hockey Roos already. Um, but I think, yeah, it's probably when you're around 15 or 16 and obviously coming through the commercial um, club that you hear a little bit more about her just through, you know, people that you know back home. So I think a lot of people knew that she would make it to the Hockey Roos and she's got her foot in the door now and hopefully will go on to great things. And Donnie, knowing that she was a commercial player coming to Perth, um, obviously... You probably had a few texts from players saying look after her. <laughs> I did. I got um, a few messages saying make sure you look after her and uh, she doesn't need too much looking after. But I think you always have that bond um, with the other Queensland girls coming through and especially p having played at the same club. You kind of have that bond even though we didn't really know each other that well. You still, I guess, want to look out for her a little bit more and make sure that she's fitting in and, and doing the right thing. So oh, I think she's just got... Um, she's getting all embarrassed, but I think she's just got a great all-round hockey game. I don't think it matters where on the field she plays, um, what kind of game it's in, um, you know that she'll do the job and she's just got a great all-round hockey ability. Her technical ability is great, her physical ability is great, so I think there's the makings there. She's, you know, only just started at the hockey room level, but she already fits in and can play international hockey and, and look like she's um, in the right spot. Um, Renee, um, in saying that, having your dreams come true, um, is there nothing bigger and better? Oh, it's incredible. Just, you know, pulling on the uniform for the first time, even just getting the uniform, it's just basically a dream come true, you know, since you were five or six, you know, I remember watching the boys win 2004 gold in um, Athens, it was like 3am, sitting up and going, that's what you want, that's what you want to do, so, you know, a, bit, a few ups and downs along the way, but, you know, standing out there, singing the anthem along with the girls, just no better feeling. Yeah, gave goosebumps. Oh, it was ridiculous. I remember like, I wasn't nervous until the anthem started going and everything just went down. So, all right, just got to make the first trap. I think I might have missed it, but, you know, couldn't get worse from there. So, but yeah, it was just incredible. Yeah, too, so with hockey um, over in Perth, do you think you can make a living out of that, Renee? Oh, I think at the moment, like, you know, we're training full time as athletes. So, you know, it's not, we're not as high profile as the rugby or the AFL players, but. You know, it's not really a living, but you chase your dream for as long as you can and you get by with what you've got, so. That's it. Madonna, and looking back, um, obviously, you probably wouldn't change it for anything, but should you have taken a different path, do you think that may have paid you a bit more money? <laughs> uh, definitely not. Um, yeah, I think we're lucky enough at the moment where we're getting paid enough to do it full time and... Um, kind of have that as our main focus in life which I think is what you want to be as an elite athlete but you know there's plenty of money in other sports a um, lot more money in other sports but for me it's you know that's the game that we fell in love with and I'm probably am not too good at anything else to be honest I tried a few different sports and uh, clearly hockey was the one I needed to stick with yeah well I would agree with that <laughs> um, Madonna what are the pros and cons of not playing so many um, tests in Perth well, I think, you know, it's great for our sport in Australia to get out um, to as many places as you can, whether they're major cities or even country areas, I think um, can only be a positive. To have international teams coming um, to play great matches all around the country just gives our game a little bit more exposure. And, you know, you want kids growing up playing hockey to be able to see their national team play so that they can relate to the players, get to see them live. And we've done, we've had a lot of matches in Perth, um, which is great because the Perth hockey community really get behind the sport. And it's also obviously both the men's and women's teams are there, so it's cheaper and more, um, I guess, achievable to play games there. But hopefully this year and in the coming years, we can get around the country a little bit more and just, um, 
yeah, give the opportunity to the hockey fans to see their national teams play. Yeah, I think especially for me, my debut was in Sydney. So, you know, if it was over in Perth, probably wouldn't have got as many family and friends coming down to watch it and play. Or even if it was overseas, probably mum and dad would have only rocked up. So um, I think just, yeah, playing on the East Coast a little bit more, it's a bit more feasible. It's a bit, it's a bit more high profile, you know, people are more likely to fly from Sydney up to Brisbane or down to Melbourne to watch a game and make this trek over to Perth. So, but then again, Perth facilities are at such a high class that, you know, it's kind of hard to put them in the back seat just to be on the East Coast. Cool. And um, so Madonna, 300 games. Renee, three games. Um, Renee, firstly, your short term, uh, short term goal is been achieved. What's your long term goal? Oh, long term goal. I think that's just to maybe establish a more permanent spot in the seniors team. Like, you know, you got the likes of Donny over here, she's played 300 games, just incredible. I think my goal was to play one and I thought you were going to say that. your goal is to get me out of the team and <laughs> take my position. <laughs> no, no, you got that one down packed up. No, just, you know, just maybe be a bit more established. You know, you look at the Australian team and like the names come to mind are Madonna, Tennille, Casey, all just top level players, world class athletes. And, you know, it's just a dream to be able to go, I'm there, like, I'm a hockey roo, I'm a permanent hockey roo. So, you're going to play a couple of games, but. You know, can't say I'm quite there yet. And Donny, the achievement is just outstanding. Yeah. Maybe another 300? <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, you know, there's a big difference between three and 300. I think it's about 10 years. So that's what Renee's got to look forward to. But for me, I just want to keep playing um, good hockey for as long as possible. And whether that's for another year or a bit longer, um, then so be it. But yeah, it was a strange feeling to play 300 because you still feel like you could be one of the youngsters in the team. I'm clearly not, but um, yeah, just it goes by so quickly. And I think 300, it's a, it's a big number and um, something I'm proud of, but it's definitely, there's still a little bit more to do. Yeah, and the girls celebrated your 300 pretty well. Yeah, they looked after me. They um, really got around it and I, I guess tried to make it as special as possible for me. And um, yeah, it was a little bit overwhelming at times, just the amount of support and messages that I received. But um, yeah, we got the win, which was the most important thing. And, and then the girls, yeah, they just made it a really special, special day for me. Renee, three games, but uh, it might have been a bit more in New Zealand. But what, what, what there's a story behind this? Yeah, um, got a bit of a hit during training. Uh, first training session in New Zealand, um, you know, got in the way of one of Donnie's shots. I think it was because I had a few words to her before training, but <laughs> she didn't want to borrow that. So, you know, put me in place. She's captain. I'm the rookie. But no, just didn't get out, yeah. get, get out of the way. Yeah, get out of the way a little bit quicker. <laughs> Donnie gets a shot. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> well, I think the final question is, uh, we may as well we'll have it on film and we'll lock it in, <laughs> that you two definitely, when you do return back to Brisbane, will be wearing the purple um, shirts um, and probably, hopefully, we might slot you back into A grade. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> But thanks for having the, um, coming out today, guys, and spending the day here with us. Um, very much appreciate it. We know you're a busy, busy uh, life and you have family to see here while you're here. Um, but it's always great so that you guys can come to back to commercial and have a bit of time with us as well. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us.